to pull or not to pull? That is the question. To keep things simple, you may not want to use your clicker right now. You'll have enough on your hands between holding the leash and delivering treats. The clicker can be used later if you want to add more precision to your dog's leash walking behavior. It's helpful to wear a bait bag to hold your treats. Later on, the food will need to be hidden more discreetly and eventually faded. But for now, the bait bag allows quick access to the treats you'll be dishing out frequently. Begin training in a quiet setting to help your dog succeed. Keep sessions short and fun. Here you see a 16-week-old shelter pup who has almost no leash experience. A four-foot leash is attached to a flat buckle collar. Sherry begins by backing up and encouraging the pup to follow. The backward movement helps to keep his attention. Every couple of steps, she gives a treat and verbal encouragement. The leash is slack almost all of the time. Notice how frequently she rewards the pup for attention and loose leash. This is a very important training tip. A common mistake of novice trainers is being stingy with rewards. It's important to keep up a very high rate of reinforcement when teaching a new skill. By doing this, your dog remains happily focused on you and you'll be able to teach new skills more efficiently. When your dog is following easily, begin walking forward. If you want him to be at your left side, be sure to deliver treats while he's in this position. That's why we hold the leash in our right hand. It keeps the left hand free for treat delivery. In this demonstration, Sherry is reaching across her body with treats in her right hand. This can be awkward, and you'll notice Flake is crossing in front of her to meet the treat halfway, a habit that may be hard to break later. As you continue training, move at a brisk pace and change directions regularly so the dog is less likely to get distracted. When he can keep a loose leash for two steps, then require three or four steps before treating. Keep building up the number of loose leash steps between each treat. When your dog is doing well walking at your side, add an informal cue like, let's go. If he lags behind, try using better treats or become more animated in the way you talk to your dog and possibly in the way you're moving too. Delivering treats at your side will also minimize lagging. Despite your good efforts, he will get distracted at some point. This is your chance to introduce the rule that pulling never works. Excellent. When dealing with dogs that don't already have a long and successful history of pulling, this can be taught easily. Every time he begins to pull, immediately stop in your tracks. This is often called becoming a tree and you stay frozen this way until the leash goes slack and he refocuses on you. Then begin to walk again, treating frequently for loose leash behavior. Some dogs are more motivated than others to pull on leash, especially if their owner has reinforced pulling in the past by following the dog. If you think you are adhering to the no pulling rule by becoming a tree, yet you still have an inattentive pulling dog, then your leash handling skills may need work. Here's a training tip to help you. Although you stand still when the dog pulls, you may be giving him too much freedom on the leash because your arms keep moving. That can yield him quite a few feet of additional freedom and he'll feel like he's actually getting somewhere, even if the gain is only temporary. As a result, it usually takes longer for him to refocus on you. In this demonstration, it takes Audrey 18 seconds to focus on Virginia because she has too much leash freedom. To prevent this, gather and hold the leash with both hands locked at your waist when the dog is pulling, as you see demonstrated now. This will reduce his freedom and show him that pulling is truly a dead end. Notice how quickly Audrey's attention returns to Virginia with these improved handling techniques. Good girl! I love that! When your dog is doing well in a variety of quiet settings, start to add distractions. They should be mild at first and also a distance away. You know your dog best, so start with things that barely interest him and gradually move up to the toughest distractions. 
Any resurgence in pulling should be mild if you introduce low-level distractions far away at first. But be ready to lock yourself into a stationary position if his attention does stray. When he gives up his pulling attempts and focuses on you, take a couple of steps and reward him when he walks alongside you again. Gradually bring him closer to the low-level distraction until he's able to walk right by it on a loose leash. Then increase the distraction level slightly, beginning again at a distance away.